Welcome to 72 software development terms you should know. If you're watching this, the YouTube algorithm probably led you here. It's not quite the magic you may think it is, it's just a set of rules or instructions that determine the content shown to you. The algorithm is part of YouTube's backend. The backend is the server side of an application that handles logic, data storage and communication. This usually includes a database managed using some variation of the structured query language, pronounced SQL or SQL. I like SQL, it's very approachable, much like Python, currently one of the most popular programming languages due to its simplicity compared to languages such as C++. C++ is a powerful general purpose language used for developing operating systems, browsers, games, embedded systems and more. When learning a language like C++, it will inspire you to develop an intimate relationship with debugging. Debugging is the process of stepping through your code to find and fix errors. When you're done debugging, you'll be using Git for version control. Git handles the history of your work and integrates nicely into your integrated developer environment, such as Microsoft Visual Studio, PyCharm or Xcode. These IDEs provide useful tools for software development, such as the editor which contains features like Synth Syntax highlighting and autocomplete. Syntax, by the way, is what defines the structure of your program. After writing your code, you'll use build tools found inside your IDE to compile it into binary code, which the computer then executes. This is true for compiled languages like C, C++, C Sharp, and COBOL. For interpreted languages like Python, JavaScript, and Perl, an interpreter reads and executes the code line by line during runtime. Programming languages are either statically or dynamically typed. In statically typed languages like Java, type checking happens at compile time, meaning you have to declare your variables when you define them and it cannot be changed. In dynamically typed languages like Python, type checking happens at runtime. In Python, you can convert one data type into another on the fly, such as by turning a string into an integer. An integer is a data type that holds a whole number, positive, negative, or zero. A string is a sequence of characters, such as hello world. Other data types include float, containing real numbers with a decimal, double, which are largely real numbers with a decimal, boolean, that can hold true or false, and characters or charts that hold a single character. Arrays, sometimes called lists, are a list of the same elements. Did you know that in C, string Strings are already implemented and are instead created using an array of chars. Now you know. Objects are instances of a class and are a very fundamental concept in object-oriented programming. Classes are the blueprint for creating objects and contain attributes and methods as well as constructors and destructors. Inheritance allows for new classes to be formed using already defined ones. Here, dog is a derived class of an animal. It contains all the attributes of an animal such as age and weight, but also dog-specific attributes such as breed. Networking is fundamental when it comes to programming, at least if you want to reach beyond your own computer. An IP address is a unique unique identifier for a device on a network. TCP is a protocol that allows devices to connect to each other in order to transfer data. UDP is a TCP alternative that is faster but less reliable. APIs are a common way for devices to interact with each other, such as by using the ChatGPT API to use ChatGPT inside your application. These elements, or others, when combined, create a tech stack, which includes all the programming languages, frameworks, libraries, tools that all come together to make your dream application a reality. At the top of the tech stack lies the front end or client side, often a graphical user interface or GUI. Be sure not to confuse UI with AI, VR with AR, or SaaS with PaaS. An OS or operating system runs your code, but it can also terminate it, such as by throwing a segmentation fault if you attempt to access unallocated memory, something I can assure you I have never done. Other common errors include the buffer overflow where a program writes outside of a buffer, such as by assigning this letter outside of this array. It even compiles without a warning. Deadlocks are where two or more competing actions are waiting for each other to finish, and thus neither ever does, usually causing a freeze. Arrays condition occurs when two or more threads access shared data or resources in a way that lead to unexpected or incorrect results. The divide by zero error is self-explanatory. The operating system's foundation is the kernel, which handles the communication between software and hardware. A kernel panic results from a fatal and terrible error, causing it to quit, give up, and shut your computer down. In Windows, these are known as the blue screen of death. Try avoiding these mistakes by incorporating code reviews and pair programming, which often comes in handy during refactoring, which is where you modify existing codes without changing its external behavior. That concludes 70 two software development terms you should know. Be sure to like and subscribe and watch this video next.